You ever wonder how Star Wars would have played out if the Separatists had actually defeated the Jedi and clone army on Geonosis? Maybe things would have still played out the same, but maybe, and just maybe, they quite possibly could have found a way to harness that momentum and allowed it to carry them all the way to galaxy-wide domination. Well, no need to waste your time thinking about that. Instead, why not waste your time watching this video where it actually happens? Welcome to the third installment of our Galactic Conquest series, where I go through and try to complete each of the four Galactic Conquests in one life. If I die, I restart the entire Conquest. I know I said it in the last video, but thank you all so much for the support on this project. I was fully expecting these videos to bomb, so to see the previous two become some of the fastest growing videos that I've ever released on this channel is so damn special to me. Especially considering the fact that Star Wars Battlefront 2 was such a special game to me as a person. And I'm glad that, at least from reading the comments, most of you have been able to recall your favorite moments of a fantastic game from long, long ago. I chose not to stream the rest of this series, but that's purely because I have something special planned in the near future. You see, on December 1st, I'll be doing whatever the YouTube version of a subathon is, so you can catch me live attempting to beat not just one Galactic Conquest, but the entire catalog in one sitting. That's right, all four Galactic Conquests in one session. I'll have more info on that in the next few days, so be on the lookout via the community tab or in my Discord. Alright, shameless plugs out of the way. Let's go take another Republic command post and overthrow the Galactic Senate in a feat that'd make Helldivers 2 look like child's play. Since you guys yearn for my pain and suffering, I have included most of the deaths from my earlier attempts as well. Seriously, it was one of the most commented things on the Empire video, you fucking psychos. But I am for the people, so let's walk through them. Real quick, before I forget, I'm also trying something new with recording these and doing it in a windowed mode instead of a full screen mode, so let me know if you prefer this aspect ratio or the old one from the first two videos. My first attempt lasted, I don't know, three minutes? And, I mean, come on, some people think that's an average amount of time. You wouldn't want to go too long, right? Then it'd just get boring. It's probably almost better to finish fast like this, and then you still have time and energy left for other things, like, like, like Legos or something. My second attempt was a bit longer, and I managed to make it through most of the battle before exploding. One thing I completely forgot about with Super Battle Droids is the fact that they have a built-in Super Shotgun with unlimited ammo. I wish I was joking. Oh, and it's fucking lethal and can one-shot a clone from several feet away. Admittedly, I got way too overconfident with it, I ended up overextending, and was subsequently blown up behind enemy lines. It took until my third attempt to actually land a wrist rocket kill. Super exciting, I know, but for whatever reason, they just feel very lackluster when I use them. Maybe it's because I'm used to catching one to the face instead of aiming at the clone's feet, but I don't know, they just felt like a lot weaker compared to when I was on the receiving end of one of them. Anyway, this was another quick out for me, and one of those where you just say, fuck this map, we're doing something else. And by something else, I mean a space battle over Dagobah. I gotta say, I love the droid spaceships. All of them. The fighters, the bombers, the landing cruiser. They all look and play amazing. Especially the bomber. A few of you had pointed this out in previous videos, but the CIS bomber is easily the best one in the game. It just full dumps its entire kit in less than a second instead of slowly dropping one bomb at a time, which allows you to just melt enemy defenses. Also, real quick, why the fuck did the Republic cruisers get three frigates with them? How is that fair? This isn't just a one-off instance either, this happens multiple times throughout the playthrough. Anyway, with the frigates destroyed, I tried to do something daring and take on the enemy destroyer from space instead of landing in the hangar. Naturally, this ended exactly how you were expecting it to. For my fifth attempt, I actually had a good run going. Tatooine was smooth sailing for the most part, just capturing command posts and walking through the clones on my way to a 45 kill victory.
On to Camino. Fuck. Going into my sixth attempt, I changed up my strategy, purchasing an engineer droid and jumping into a space battle. Much like every other space battle, I hopped in a bomber and got to work destroying the enemy frigates. This time, however, instead of trying to do another bombing run on the destroyer, I simply landed inside it like I've done in the past. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Honestly, this was kind of the motto for the CIS run. What I've noticed is that when I rush in with no patience, it always ends in death. But the moment I sit back and just move methodically, I just start cakewalking planets. And I think I've pinpointed why. See, I start recording these at like 7 in the morning after chugging a monster and getting ready for the day. And I'm dead serious when I say that. My daughter goes to daycare at 7, and I'm down and recording by 7.15. I then die on repeat for about 2 or 3 hours before I sit back and go, what the hell am I doing? Why not just stop rushing in? And that's when I get the good runs. And in this instance, that all started on Naboo. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This went on for another hour or two. I'd get like two or three wins and then immediately die, much like the last two videos. It wasn't until my 15th or 16th reset that I actually got my full run in, and funny enough, it all started with Polis Massa. I figured, for once in these runs, let's not wait until the final planet to tackle this one. After trying and failing several times, I decided to just avoid the main battle altogether, and instead grab a tank and head out into the void. After securing a 30 reinforcement lead, I headed into their furthest back command post and began the process of taking them from behind, no ditty. As I approached the second command post, I noticed that I could just swap into the secondary turret on the tank and absolutely farm the clones as they funneled down this one hallway. That was until another droid saw an opportunity to be a hero and stole the tank from me. Not to worry though, another tank had spawned in, so I just grabbed that and got back to work. Oh, fun fact, if you're the droids, you don't take damage while out in void, since, you know, they don't breathe. Next up was a space defense of Geonosis. This was one of the more gritty space battles of the playthrough, for sure. The frigates weren't really an issue, I only had to turn away one time to make repairs, but good god, did they put up stiff resistance over the engines for some reason. They almost killed me several times during this entire process. I thought it was pretty funny though. They sold out to kill me in the engines room, but then I finally leave the room and head into the auto turret defenses, you know, you know that main room, and there's no one there. So then I blow that up and head into the life support room, and then they all come funneling in once again. It's like they just had to take a quick coffee break and then come back to the fight. This was followed up by yet another space battle over the same planet while I maneuvered into an attack position. For this battle though, I tried to spice things up a bit and grabbed the landing cruiser instead of my normal bomber. Why? Well, I couldn't quite tell you why. I think I was just getting a little bored of pulling the same trick over and over again. I gotta say though, the landing cruiser may be slow, but it does consistent damage and can take an absolute beating. Especially when it's fully loaded with all guns functional. I only had one instance the entire battle where I almost died, and that didn't come until I was targeting the enemy ship's command bridge.
This would mark the first space battle of the entire series so far that I won without landing in the enemy capital ship. But let's take a short break from space battles and do something a little more exciting, like invading a planet currently housing trillions of people. I went ahead and purchased the engineer class for this run, but the clones countered by deploying a garrison. Probably one of the smartest moves the enemy has ever pulled, considering, and I know I've said it multiple times by now, but this is my favorite map. This was an odd battle to say the least, and by that I mean not much happened. About 95% of the entire fight took place in this one hallway here, where my main concern was just not giving up the command post behind me. It'd go something like this. I'd pop out, maybe get a few kills, take some damage, retreat back to that command post and heal up, repeat as needed. I did this about three or four times until the clones deployed their garrison bonus, but even that didn't seem to help them. Sure, they took the lead back with it temporarily, but it didn't seem to matter if they had to survive this killbox-styled setup we had going on. Doubling up on this victory, I went ahead and attacked Tatooine. I feel like the clones are actually using decent bonuses compared to the CIS and Rebels, who would just spam energy boost and supplies over and over again. Like, these guys went ahead and grabbed a garrison, and then followed that up with another garrison on this one. I don't know, maybe they're just getting lucky on a random pool, but it feels like they're a little more tactical in how they deploy their bonuses, and I really like that. This fight was rough, and I'm not even sure why. Maybe it was the extra troops, or maybe we just suck on this planet, but we got our asses whooped. I spent most of the battle fighting for my life over one single command post. Like, look at this deficit. This was the first time in the series that I basically just gave up and hid, letting them cap the final command post and accepting defeat, surviving to fight another day. It was such an embarrassing loss that even the game couldn't handle it. I'll consider that the game throwing me a bone though, there's not really much I can do about that. Instead of repeating the battle, I continued in the top of the galaxy and pushed into Mygito. The clones took the rebel approach and suicide charged me at the very start, but luckily for me, I went with the tank approach. Now, sure, this led to a few battle droids getting turned into scrap metal, but maybe they should just get the fuck out of the way next time and it wouldn't be a problem. I don't know. Seems like common sense to just not stand directly in front of a tank, but apparently that's still a problem for both the droids and Chinese citizens. This was another very easy battle, considering I could just sit in a tank the entire time and blow shit up whenever I pleased. On the off chance that we ended up taking too much damage, I can simply move out of the way, hop out, repair the tank, and then continue on my warpath. With the credits received from Coruscant and Mygito, I purchased the Droidica troops, and what better place to try them out on than Utapau? To get the points needed to unlock them, I simply capped a command post and hopped in a tank. I 
After racking up a few kills, I retreated back, swapped over to the Droidica, and got to work. And these things are so damn cool. They melt clone troopers, and obviously with the mini ray shields, you can post up with them and hold entire lanes by yourself, as long as you don't let the grenades get too close to you. Now if you do need to retreat or reposition, you can just drop them down into the armadillo mode and roll out fast as fuck. I'm not even kidding, if you sprint with them, they fucking zoom. Also, first person mode looks sick. After only a few minutes, we were already up almost 50 reinforcements on them, with the clones pushed back to a single command post. So I went and hid behind a health droid and let the droid's army wrap up the battle for me. And that got boring really fast though, so I ended up rolling back over and cleaning up the remaining clones. With a successful defense of Utapau, I kept up the momentum and invaded Naboo, throwing on combat shields as a bonus. The only annoying part about the Droidicas is that you need to get 12 points before they unlock, which means I've got to get some kills or capture a few command posts before I get the chance to use them in every battle. While doing this, I had a near-death experience, but thankfully, I've played this map enough to know where some of the back to droids are hidden, such as up on the second floor balcony. I swapped over to the Droidica as soon as it was available, and got to work pushing into the clone flank. When we'd all but secured the infamous corner, I looped back around and put pressure on the courtyard, ultimately securing it and pushing the clones back to just one command post. Command post is under Confederacy control. Can you guess where the remaining clone troopers are? Here, I'll give you a hint. With Naboo under our control, the clones countered with an invasion on Geonosis, using only energy boosts as their bonus. I take it back, these guys don't know what the fuck they're doing. This was one of those fights where you go into it knowing you're gonna steamroll, so I took the opportunity to try out some of the droid tanks and spider walker thing, starting with the Hellfire tank. Now this thing is sweet, but it's a pain in the ass to control. One of those vehicles where it looks cool when you see it in action, but it's better left to the bots. When I'd gotten some use out of it, I jumped out, captured a clone command post, and began making my way back to try out those spider walker things. I will say, I really liked that the clones used the phase 1 armor for this battle, and I wish there were more battles in Galactic Conquest where they used it, because I don't actually know of any others outside of Geonosis where they do wear this armor. Anyway, onto the spider walkers. Talk about a stupid design. Imagine seeing this on an actual battlefield. You could probably hit this thing in the legs of the baseball bat and take it out. To be honest, the droid tanks on Geonosis are very underwhelming. But I guess that makes sense though. You kind of want that to be the case, especially when you have the benefit of infinite flying bug people at your disposal. Regardless, another victory for the Separatists. To celebrate, I purchased both the Assassin and Assault droids and invaded Dagobah. The clones threw on another garrison bonus, but I wasn't too worried about it. I went as an Assassin droid for this battle, opting to take a break from the Droidica class. This was mainly due to the landscape of the planet. It's tough to navigate as a normal soldier, so I can't imagine how painful it'd be to try and work through this as a Droidica. Not to mention, Assassin droids are incredibly nimble and hard to hit, so they're much easier to work with on a planet like Dagobah. Also, their sniper rifle looks dope in first person. The only downside to sniping is that you can get hit with the beam rifle as a reward, and I hate it. Actually, I don't think there's anything I hate more in this game than the beam rifle. It's so bad. You like having variable zoom? Gone. You like being able to have a centered reticle that hits enemies on sight? Gone. 
How about insta damage? Gone. Nothing will make me permanently switch to a pistol faster than accidentally swapping to the beam rifle from the standard sniper, and I stand by that. With Dagobah under our control, we now own 8 of the 13 planets in the galaxy, meaning we're closer to the end than the beginning. But don't worry, there's still some incredible battles to come. Before we get to those though, we've gotta muck through some space battles. To try and get through them more quickly, I purchased the Sabotage bonus and headed to battle. This scene was, once again, entirely fought without entering the enemy hangar. No real reason as to why, I'm just having fun with bombing runs compared to running in with a pistol every time. This fight was followed up with yet another space battle. Only this time, no sabotage bonus, so it's back to basics. And by basics, I mean taking the boarding ship, blowing up the enemy frigates, getting into a few dogfights, and ultimately landing in the enemy hangar with a team of droids. Though none of them are marines, so maybe this wasn't the best strategy to implement. But as it turned out, it was maybe the best strategy we could have come up with. With all the droids flooding into the enemy hangar, none of the clone pilots could get to their ships. And while we were busy making it too difficult to leave, I snuck through the vault doors and blew up the auto turret defenses before looping around to the life support room, securing yet another space battle win for us. Onto Kashyyyk, and what was quite possibly the fastest battle of the series to date, coming in at 3 minutes and 27 seconds. So how did it all unfold? Well, simple really. Because we've been grinding out this account for 2.5 galactic conquests now, I'm perma-unlocking some bonuses like damage increase, making sniping much more lethal, especially when it's paired with enhanced blasters. After taking the beach, I hopped into a tank, spit on it, and crammed myself through the tight doorway. No ditty once again. Shout out to Fear John for the tip on this one. I appreciate you, sir. Once the gate was down, it was an absolute bloodbath. I mean, they didn't stand a chance. Another victory for the Separatists means another counterattack for the clones. 
This time, attempting to retake Naboo. They even threw on a little garrison bonus. Isn't that adorable? I started off with a tank, mainly because I hate those little walker tanks that the clones have. But once I'd blown up a few of those, I pushed in and grabbed the side command post, swapping to a droidica following that moment. From there, it was a healthy dose of overwhelming force, pushing the clones back into R. Kelly's corner, and then hosing them out. I chose to withhold bonuses from Yavin 4 since this seems to be a battle that the droids and Empire just win outright. So instead of putting extra stress into it, I just hopped back into a tank and repeated the same method I did with the Empire. While I waited for the final enemies to be hunted down, I did start messing around with one of the speeder bikes, and almost launched myself into the stratosphere after taking it off a sweet jump. Can, can you imagine if this, ended, if this was the thing that ended my run? How embarrassing would that have been? Thank god that didn't happen. Alright, let's, let's, let's go. Once again, the clones tried to take Geonosis, and once again we managed to push them back without any bonuses. This was another incredibly lopsided victory for us, and looking back at it, those tend to come from the battles where I choose a sniper class. In this instance, however, I did notice that the clone snipers were targeting me more often than other troops had in the past. There were at least six different times where I would sight in on someone, only to realize that it was a clone sniper already aiming at me. I just happen to be faster on the trigger. Anyway, as the battle began to wind down, I swapped over to the assault class and started firing rockets at the enemy tank. Funny enough, it finally pivoted and began firing at me, almost killing me multiple times, but it was simply too late and one final rocket was all I needed to do it in. With the influx of points I'd been stashing, I purchased the Magna Guard and Droid Marine. I also went ahead and purchased a garrison bonus before invading Felucia. You can call me a bitch for this all you want, but with the conquest almost wrapped up, there was no way in hell I was taking any chances on a map like Felucia. Let's be real, we've all been cooked on this map more times than we'd like to admit, so why risk it? I already have the high ground. So I just sat back with an assassin droid and slowly picked off any clones that made their way over. And even with this bitch ass strat, I still almost got taken out by an enemy sniper, who missed me by literal pixels. Even after all the sniping, the garrison, and starting with the high ground, I still found myself in yet another last stand. 
Come to think of it, I don't think there's been a single match on Felucia that didn't end with my death or a one-man army on the hilltop. With only a few enemies remaining, I hopped into a tank and began hunting them down. Why a tank and not just on foot? Well, because they love to sit back as snipers in their command posts and snipers can one-shot me. Not worth the risk. They also blend in really well with the surroundings since the snipers wear camouflage. No worries though, they still love to yeet grenades at tanks and then walk directly in front of them. I do think it's a little funny how the clones just alternate between Geonosis and Naboo. That being said, I think I hate Naboo. Like, sure it's got the infamous corner, but I don't know, there's just something about it that puts a bad taste in my mouth. Because of this, I once again started in a tank, and after about two minutes of fucking around, I got bored and moved on over to the Magna Guard to switch things up. Now these guys are dope as hell. They've got a semi-auto pistol that fires rockets, a grenade launcher, a recon drone that can self-destruct, and a poison gas they can release. Overall, just a ton of fun, and if you've got a good spot, you can even spawn kill enemies with the rockets. Seriously, if you typically avoid them, I highly recommend giving them a try. They're not my all-time favorite class, but they're definitely far from the worst. Alright, back to Tatooine. This fight was, for the most part, controlled, I guess is the word to say. There was only one real moment that made me clench my cheeks so hard that I almost went to the hospital. Just look at my health here. Reminder, there are, including this one, two planets left. After changing my clothes, I sat back down, swapped to a Magna Guard droid, and cleaned up what was left of the clone defense team. At this point, we've got Kamino completely surrounded, forcing them to commit to one final space battle instead of a risking a lucky grenade during a ground invasion. I went ahead and applied a sabotage bonus and hopped in the landing cruiser to board the enemy ship one final time. After taking out the frigates, of course.
All that stands between us and total supremacy is Kamino. This is a tough fight on its own merit. The center of the map is a colossal shit show, so I tried to avoid that as much as possible. Instead, I chose to hang back and opted for an assassin droid so I could pick off enemies from relative safety. As the battle began to wind down, a rogue bounty hunter entered the battle to secure a victory for the Separatist Trade Federation. It's honestly a bit fucked up if you think about it, because they're literally cloning Jango Fett, right? That's that's the canon event, is he's the one that's being cloned to make the clone troopers. But you can use him as a hero against the clones on Kamino, you know, the planet where they're actively housing him and his son. I don't know, I just, I just thought that was funny. After completing three of the four conquests, here is where we're at. 5,362 points, 2,890 kills, the rank of Captain, and legendary bonuses applied to Guardian, which gives damage reduction, Endurance, self-explanatory, and War Hero, which gives increased damage. Now looking back at all of this, I don't think I had any crazy standout games here. This was just a solid, fun galactic conquest. Sure, there were no 100 kill games, and there were also no 5 or 6 kill games, aside from one space battle. It was just a fun way to burn a day away. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna continue to say it, but I love Star Wars Battlefront 2. It's a game I played the shit out of as a kid growing up, and one that I continue to find myself going back to every once in a while throughout the last 15 to 20 years. We've got one final conquest left, and I'm hoping to have that out sometime this upcoming week for you all. One final note, I mentioned it at the beginning, but I will be doing a big subathon styled stream covering all four galactic conquests live here on YouTube on December 1st. I tried to include tiers for you all to make my life hell without having to pay for it, because I feel like people should be able to contribute to things like that even if they don't want to pay for it. With that though, I'll see you in a few days. I appreciate you all. Go call a loved one. And thanks for stopping by.